lives this morning. Father, we know that in your presence, troubles vanish and hearts are mended. And Father, we welcome you into this place this morning. Touch each life that is here. Touch each heart that is here, Father. And we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. working, Brandon? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Do what? Speaking of, I got a message the other night on Facebook. Yeah, I know. My kids should have never signed me up for that because I spend too much time on there. But sometimes I get some awful good messages up of there. I get a private message the other night on Facebook from a grandma, mom. What is your take on Halloween? Never been asked that one before. But since you ask, for the most part, I don't like Halloween because it glorifies Satan. Halloween started as a pagan ritual called All Hallows' Eve. But I told this grandma, I said, I don't agree with all of the scary, ghouly, nasty costumes and stuff because that all glorifies Satan and something evil. But as for the holiday, the kids dressing up, going knocking on doors, getting some candy, I don't see a big problem. A lot of, there. Are, I know there are parents that don't allow their kids to participate in any way because it's just it's a time for the kids to go out and have fun. But just be conscious of what your kids are doing and how they're dressing up, and make sure that they're not glorifying something evil like zombies. And <laughs> this stuff is just goofy. You know, and I've seen people put stuff, everybody knows zombies are for real. No, they're not. Folks, I'm sorry. When you're dead, you're dead. So that's it. This body is only coming out of the ground when Jesus Christ comes back. And it's going to be perfect. I know we can't all be that way now. Are you saying zombies are real? No. Are you saying the deal about the people that raised from the dead from after being killed from Ebola on Facebook is true? No. <laughs> Not that people can't be raised from the dead, but it's when the Spirit of God enters them and raises them up. But they're not going to come back half rotted away and bones sticking out and go, uh, that ain't going to happen this body comes out of the ground it's going to be complete perfect and glorify God the Father yeah I haven't seen I haven't seen the new one, the Hollywood version of Left Behind. I've seen and I own the first three original Left Behind movies that were based on the books Left Behind. Now, now it, it does it does show it like God says, you know, they'll, they'll vanish in the blink of an eye. Yeah. You know, and that's what happens, you know, and it leaves everything in turmoil, you know. And, but it was really slow. I mean, it was a, don't get me wrong, it was a really good movie, but it was really slow. It has to be good. It's got Nicolas Cage in it. 
I mean, <laughs> it has to be a good movie. I mean, it's got Nicolas Cage in it. I mean. Well, see that, and that's actually the way it was in the original movie. Mm -hmm. That's got uh, Kirk Cameron in it. Uh, all the kids disappeared off of the plane, and there was this one little grandma sitting there in her seat, and she asked the stewardess, she said, uh, "Can you go t to the restroom and check on my husband?" Well, that's yeah. kind of what was her husband. And she s and the lady said, "Why?" She said, "Well, I think he's got up and went to the restroom, but he left all of his clothes here in his seat." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, there's just a handful of other people that disappeared yeah. besides the kids. Yeah, and there's, you know, and then there's the one preacher, the yeah, associate the pastor of, the, of yeah. the church that the airline pilot was going to. You know, the pastor and half the congregation left, but here's the associate pastor. I missed it. Well, this one was the actual pastor. The pastor just was left. Yeah. He's like, and what he said there, he said, you can know the word, you can read the word, he said, but believe in it, it just is. Good segue into today's message. All right. <laughs> you can know the word. You can believe there is a God. You can believe Jesus Christ died for your sins. And you can still die and go to hell. Why? Because you never acted on the word. This is... Part two of Is God's Word True? And I struggle with how to start this, but you know, we, we've talked about in the, in the first part, we talked about healing and knowing God and, and knowing, that, knowing that we know that we know. But we talked a lot about healing. And the question has come up, Why, how do I say this? Why do I feel like sometimes I'm not healed? And the only thing, the, the, the scripture that came to my mind was Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 and 45. And that's just, I'm just going to touch on this shortly here, and then we're going to get into the rest of this. But this is, Jesus is talking about a person who, a, a, a demonic spirit had been cast out of. And he was well. He was whole. And then, in verse 43, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes back, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. But what's Jesus talking about here? He's talking about a person who has received salvation, who has received healing, and everything is great, and everything is going good, and now he forgets that, hey, Jesus actually healed me. He saved me. His house is all clean. He's, everything's in order, but he started to live for the world again. He started to let the cares of the world. Oh, darn, that hurt. Maybe I didn't get that healing. That's the devil jumps in there. I thought you said you was healed. How come you're limping around? How come? How come you're letting? How come you're letting this pain bother you? If you're healed, you're healed, right? The devil loves to do that to us. It's just like with salvation. We get saved. The, the Lord touches our heart, and we're on fire for Jesus. Remember that first day when you accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior? How excited you were? You had to tell everybody about it. I did. When I made that run down that aisle in that little Southern Baptist church down here to, to meet my pastor brother new at the altar and give my heart to Jesus, I wanted to tell everybody. How great it was. 
Then I went to school the next day. Got to hanging out with my buddy. Hey, did you hear about old so-and-so? He was making out in the alley with what's-her-name the other night. Really? And the old devil goes, I thought you was saved. You said you'd give your heart to Jesus last night. You didn't do that. You're the same old guy you was yesterday. Yeah, I am. And I still make mistakes. And we've got to not let the devil take control of our lives and, and mess with our mind and, and tell us that this word's not true. But how do we know he's telling us a lie if we never get in the Word and find out what the Word says? God tells us in here that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You can sit in church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, in Sunday school and Sunday morning youth group on Sunday night but if you never get in the word you never know for sure what it says you're only getting what somebody tells you it says you've got to know for yourself and when these little pains come up I get them once in a while my hips will start bothering me and I just got to Take a couple of Motrin and suck it up. Because I know that God has healed me. But every once in a while it hurts. I messed a shoulder up one time. And God healed me several years ago over at Rainbow at a men's conference. But every once in a while that shoulder goes to messing up again. And the old devil will say, I thought you said you got healed. You didn't get healed. Yes, I did, devil. Because my word says that by the blood and stripes of Jesus Christ, I was healed. We've got to stand on that. When he starts messing with our nerves and our feet and our legs and stuff, we just got to say, devil, God healed me. I don't care what I feel like. I know that I know I'm healed. He will throw stuff at us all the time. We just got to stand on what the Word says. In verse 45, and it says, And then he goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. We can't let him come back and dwell. He might come back and pick on us. He might come back and try to deceive us and lie to us and tell us that we weren't healed. We know what the Word says. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. That he himself took our pains and our sickness. 1 Peter 2, 24. By his stripes we were healed. Isaiah 53. By his stripes we are healed. He took our pain. He took our sickness. He took our suffering to the cross. We just have to remember that. And no matter what the devil throws at us or how bad he makes us feel, we've got to stand on the fact that God is a healing God and he will heal us. Don't let the devil steal your faith. Believe what the Word says. Revelation chapter 3. I'm glad we got into this study in Revelation. There's some good stuff in there. Revelation chapter 3 says, Hold fast to what you have. 
That was Jesus talking to one of the seven churches. Hold fast to what you have. Hang on to it. Don't let it go. God said you're healed. I'm healed. I might not feel like it, but I'm healed. And you're not going to steal my healing. You're not going to steal my blessing, devil. Because I'm not going to let go of it. Kenneth Hagin talks about when he finally got a hold of the truth of Mark 11, 23 and 24, that whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive and you will have whatever you ask. He said, when I finally got a hold of that truth, and it had taken years of reading and studying the Bible, and he was 16 years old, when he finally got a hold of that truth, he was laying flat on his back in bed with an incurable blood disorder and an incurable heart disease. Doctor said he's dying. There's nothing can be done for him. And they went, his mom and grandma went to one of them churches that didn't believe that God could heal. But he said, I know. I read in Psalm 91 where it said, With long life will he satisfy me. And he said, I knew there was something there. And I finally got a hold of that truth in Mark 11, 23 and 24. But he said, you know, it took almost 18 months for me to get out of that bed. Because the devil kept telling him for 18 months, you ain't healed. You're dying. I'm going to kill you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. God is still the same God he was when he made this place. Jesus is the same Jesus he was when he helped the Father make this place. He's still the same healing Jesus he was when he walked this earth 2,000 years ago. And he wants you to be healed. He wants you to be well. He doesn't want you to be sick. I believe everybody, when it's time to go, we don't go sick. That's a lie of the devil. When it's our time to go, the Holy Spirit's going to let us know it's our time to go, and we're going to lay down on our bed and go to sleep and wake up in heaven. But I ain't leaving this place sick. I'm tired of it. We got how many on our prayer list this morning that's got cancer, heart disease, diabetes? My wife was up most of the night with nerve pain in her feet. I'm tired of it. It's time we took a stand for the word and said, enough is enough. Devil, get out of here. I don't care what you think you know. I know that I know what my God's word says. And I am healed in Jesus' name. You know, when he told Abraham in Deuteronomy, or no, he told Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 24, that every place your foot touches shall be yours. But you got to go take it. He's given us health. He's given us healing. We got to go take it. Because the devil's going to fight us every step of the way. Basically what God was saying, he says, I'm, going, I'm giving you this land. Everywhere the sole of your foot touches is yours. But you've got to go in. You've got to possess it. You've got to take it. And some of it you're going to have to take by force. That means sometimes we're going to have to get up and smack the devil around and tell him to get out of our house. Amen? Just to say, I believe, does not get it done. We have to act on what we believe. 
We can say, I know Jesus Christ died for my sins. But if we don't act on that fact and ask him to come into our life and come into our heart and cleanse us of our sins, it doesn't matter what you believe. We can say, I believe God made all of this, but if we don't ever act on it, it doesn't do us any good. I, can be I believe that God's a healing God, but I need to go to the doctor because I just can't handle this. Or, you know, I went through that prayer line the other day, and that guy laid hands on me, and I felt the power of God hit me, and I was well. I didn't hurt. I didn't have a pain. You know, and about two months later, I was out in the yard doing some work, and I went, oh, man, that hurt me. And that old devil said, thought you said you was healed. Guess you didn't get that, did you? Act on it. Doubt is refusing to act on God's word. Don't doubt what this word says. It will work. But if you think the devil's just going to lay down and play dead, you got another thing coming. Because what did he do to Jesus as soon as Jesus got baptized and got filled with the Holy Ghost? Jesus goes out into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, doesn't have anything to eat. He's just communing with God, the Father. And after 40 days, he's kind of hungry. What's the devil do? He is the son of God. Tell that rock to turn into a loaf of bread. He'll hit us where we're the most vulnerable. Whether it's in, in an area of healing in our life or an area of pain in our body or hunger, if we're hungry. He'll hit us where he thinks he can do the most damage. Because if he can ever kick that door open a little bit and get in there, then he can really mess things up. We just got to stay committed to God's word. Amen? You know, John 16, 33 tells us that in this world, we're going to have a little tribulation. We're going to have a little trouble. And this world is going to hate us for the most part. And, and it really shows, you know, I can remember people talking about Oral Roberts when he would have these healing tent revivals and hundreds and hundreds of people would be healed and set free and how people talked about him. But it didn't discourage him. And I'm to the point, I don't care what people say about me. I'm going to stand up for Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. And we're going to turn this world upside down for Jesus. We can look back at some of the old, the old fathers of the faith. Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin. They weren't scared. They weren't scared of nothing the devil threw at them. Lester Summerall's another one. I remember a story time Lester Summerall and uh, Smith Wigglesworth were holding a, a revival. They were together. And this the story is this lady comes slithering down the aisle. And, and the, the story goes she was like two feet off the ground, just slithering down the aisle towards the stage. And they're setting up there, Wigglesworth and Summerall are setting up there. She just keeps getting closer and closer. And Summerall, he looks over at Smith. Smith's just sitting there. She gets almost up the stage, and Summerall leans over and says, Smith, are you going to do anything about that? Wigglesworth leans over to Lester Summerall and says, Not my anointing. She's all yours. <laughs> But that lady left that place delivered of that demon spirit. Walked out of there praising God. Uh, who's 
who's the little short chubby guy from down south that done all the screaming and hollering older guy he's from Texas Says he's, he's the one who says you can't out give God given you remember what his name was He was holding a revival in Mississippi one time. And this lady from Tennessee had a son that every, not a single joint was in place in this little baby's body. He was five years old, I believe. I mean, he was just twisted and distorted. And she saved all the money she had to go to this revival. And every day would take this little baby up to be prayed for and nothing happened. She would give... She had so much money that she could give. And the last day, she was, you know, she had no more money except enough money to buy gas to get home on. And God told her, do you trust me? And she went down that night with tears flowing with her little baby in her arms and put her last dollar in that bucket. handed her to the evangelist and I cannot think his name everybody we all know him he was an old tent revivalist from back in the 50's he takes this little baby and he starts praying and he had prayed for this little baby for four nights previous this was the fifth I believe fifth consecutive night he had prayed for this baby and he was praying for this little baby and all of a sudden he felt snap he felt something pop. And then he heard a bone snap. And he kept praying. And when he opened his eyes, he handed that little five-year-old baby back to his mama, completely, totally healed. That can happen today as well as it happened then. My Bible said that my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. God doesn't change. He wants us to be well. He wants us to be whole. But most of all, He wants us to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior and to radically change us from the inside out. Paul tells us that when we accept Christ, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are new. We ain't the same person we were. We're changed. We're different. We don't want to let Satan steal our joy. Don't let him steal, like, you know, the, the parable of the sower and the seed where some fell by the wayside on hard ground some fell in the rocks and some fell in the thorns and some fell in good soil that's the word it comes in and it you know it changes our heart but we we get we let the cares of the world start bothering us you know worrying us we get the you know we don't let it sink in they don't have any good soil and the devil comes and steals it like the birds come and eat the, the grain that fell on the hard ground. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read this book. Read it out loud. It does a lot more good to read it out loud than it does to read it silently. Because when you read it out loud, your ears hear it. So does the devil. And he don't like it. But we need to get that I don't care attitude. I don't care what the devil thinks. The two things, the two biggest lies he has told us is you don't need to read this and you don't need to pray. Because he knows. If we read this and we pray, there ain't nothing he can do to hurt us. 
Amen? Amen. Stay in the Word. Trust in the Word. And when the cares of life and when the pains of life start showing up, 